Hello everybody, Long Tails here and welcome back to another episode of Kadoa Shoujo. Uh, if you may notice throughout the entire video, I did change my mic settings to get rid of the background noises. Uh, hopefully, it will get rid of most of them, but if there's a few, ho hopefully hopefully gets rid of most of them. But I'm not sure if it actually um, makes my the, the quality of my voice any worse, but... We'll we'll stick with this with these mic settings for now and let's just get started. <clears throat> My morning alarm goes off and I flail about uselessly for a while until I remember that I decided to give morning runs another shot. I don't know if this was my greatest idea, but I'm determined to keep going. This is about my health, after all. Sure, things haven't been great lately for me. But that hasn't made existence so intolerable that I'm not going to try everything I can to stay healthy. Besides, it's all about asserting some kind of control over this thing, right? If I can manage that, well, I can manage anything. At least that's what I keep telling myself. Once again, it would appear that I'm not alone in my run. Emmy has apparently been here for some time. It looks like she's already worked up a good sweat. Just when the hell does she come down here anyway? Oh, it's you. I'm surprised to see you again. Why is that? Well, not many people actually managed to come back for a second try. She frowns, seemingly annoyed by a passing thought. Like the rest of the track team, for instance. Still, it was only supposed to be on a volunteer basis, so it's not that big of a shock. And I guess it's pretty early in the morning shrug, and suddenly it appears that she's forgotten what she was talking about. The frown disappears entirely and she seems to snap back to her previous train of thought. So, come on then. What? You're here to run again, right? Well, yes. Well, come on. I find myself suddenly grabbed and yanked into the track. Things seem to be set on mirroring yesterday's run. That is, I seem to be struggling, while Emmy moves with an effortlessness that I find enviable. It's incredibly bothersome to be so easily worn out. I know I should be patient, work toward things gradually, but it's difficult to stay positive about this. We round the track and start on our second lap. Emmy seems to have grown impatient keeping pace with me and begins to pull away. This is where I gave out yesterday. Will I be able to do more? I feel like... Hmm, the doctors did say that we should get some light exercise and not to strain ourselves too hard. So I think we should just take it easy for this time. Although, we might need to know our own limits, but I feel like going too hard might be too much. I let Emmy go with her own pace, and she doesn't show mercy, pulling half a lap ahead of me in an instant. I don't blame her. I mean, it's not as if I'm ready... I'm really putting up any sort of real fight out here, is it? Instead, I'm just running at a steady pace, which is what I should be doing, right? There's no need to go pushing my limits at this stage of the game. God, is this even worth it? As we finish the second lap, I break off again. Emmy keeps going, and it almost seems to me that she's disappointed. Well, that's stupid. I don't have anything to prove to her. Come to think of it, I've got nothing to prove to myself either. I'm just fine the way I am. And what? I'm not uh, and what I'm not is a runner. This was probably a bad idea. Maybe there's something else I can do instead of this. Getting up this early sucks anyway. There's got to be some other way to keep healthy. Walking, maybe. Nice afternoon walks. Yeah, that sounds good. Running isn't for me. I wave to Emmy and head back to my room. I'll think of something else later. Back in my room, the first thing I see is the familiar row of medication bottles lined up on top of my dresser, and it makes me depressed as usual. It's annoying. I thought I was okay. I thought I had made my peace with this thing, gotten over it. But what I really did, I allowed myself to forget that I have a problem. Being here really reminds me of the reality, and trying to fight against it just hurts. Reflecting on it is only going to do so much. I've done this before, for months. It seems like it's time to get over it. If I allow myself to forget that my life is definitely not going to be as long as those of others, I won't get anywhere. 
My life may be different from others, but it is a life in progress. That is how I'll rationalize it. I downed the usual handful of pills, trying to push the sudden dreary feeling out of my head. Then I prepared to head out to class early as usual. As I step into the hallway, I notice Kenji coming around the hallway corner, stealthily making his way over to his own room with a large bag. As he sneaks past me soundlessly as like a ninja hiding in plain sight, I call out to him. Hey. He jumps at the sound of my voice. Oh hey man, I didn't notice you there. I'm really tired. I think it's more like he didn't see me, but that's not the issue. Where have you been this early? Shopping? Nah, I wasn't shopping. Sometimes I have to visit the math teacher. Yeah, I figured it would be a good idea to find out when the next exam is, since he tells you in advance if you want. So then, what's in the bag? I thought I'd go shopping while I was outside. I need supplies to continue the fight against the vast feminist conspiracy. Uh, okay. I thought you didn't go outside. I wear a hat now. I decided to not point out that he is not wearing a hat. An awkward silence settles between us, and then Kenji breaks it by pushing his door open slowly, releasing a creaking sound into the air that only makes the moment seem more awkward. He sets the bag down inside his room and then closes the door. I'm surprised you went out of your way to find out a test date. Trying to take advantage of an opportunity to study is pretty diligent. I never study. Oh. I just wanted to know when the, te the next test day was. I'm still going to take it, duh. I need to know so I know what day I can't afford to skip class. He usually sends out updates on that crap on my phone, so I just step out and check up on it. And why do you have to go out when you can get it on your phone? I don't carry a phone. What do you mean you don't carry a phone? You mean you just leave it at home? Nah, I don't use phones. I don't have a phone. Phones? I have no phone. Why don't you have a phone? How can you not have a phone? No phone at all? No phone? What is this conversation? I just... Uh, <clears throat> I just don't like phones. Actually, I'm kind of scared of them. I don't know why. I think it's some kind of repressed trauma. But basically, when I hear a phone, I get nervous. It's my darkest secret. I have two theories on it. Either I have some fear of receiving some un undefined ominous life-altering doom call, or I was beaten with a phone in the past. Beaten so badly I can't remember it. Beaten in the head? Well, where else could I get beaten with a phone that would make me unable to remember it? The butt? Unexpectedly logical. I feel very depressed now. Sensing this conversation is more or less over, Kenji opens his door again and prepares to head inside. Yeah, I'm going to sleep, dude. Have a good one. Class is going to start in like 20 minutes. Oh, I already did something today. Too tired to go to school. Hey, you need some lip balm? I actually bought two because I thought the store had started selling individual AA batteries. Thanks, but no thanks. What? Oh. Whatever, man. He swiftly enters his lair, finally letting me go to the class. Oh, by the by the way, guys, I've been like Kato Shoujo has been having trouble with like when I skip to the next dialogue, it just pauses on a blank like thing, and then whenever I click, it it like double it, like double clicks basically into the ne next two uh, dialogue. So, uh, it's something that I have to fix for next time. But like we'll just have to we'll just have to roll it roll with it like this, I guess. For a change, I'm not among the first ones to come to a morning class. Instead, almost everyone else seems to be here already. I recognize most of my class by their faces now. By now, though the names escape me still. The class goes on lazily. I think I'm starting to get into the rhythm of the school. I have been stopped worrying about taking notes and being overly attentive. The first days, I was pretty high strung in class. Mito finishes his lecture about el electricity early but continues with a, a pause about the festival. So, as you know, the festival is on the day after tomorrow. I hope everyone's projects are going to be successful this year. Maybe something like that. I don't know why it passes like that, but we'll just, we'll just do it. We'll just keep going. Have a good time, but also come Sunday. Please keep the meaning of this festival in your minds. <clears throat> 
game said fried food. No, I can't do Misha's. It's been so long since I done Misha's voice. Oh, everyone bursts out in laughter, and so do I. You know what? Even even if all of their all of the people I voice like, if they change, if I somehow change their voice slightly or even a lot, we'll just keep going with it too. Everyone bursts out in laughter, and so do I. Yes, thank you, Mikado. But what I meant... The reminder of his sentence is buried beneath the ring of the lunch bells, and everyone starts packing their things. Muto deliberates for a moment, but since almost nobody seems to pay attention anymore, he gives up and sits down. It's crowded in the hallway, or as, or as crowded as hallways in his school probably get. Most of the students seem to be heading down for the cafeteria. Misao! I'm going to make you a one-time only super extra special lunch offer. Emmy's homemade lunch boxes and the privilege of enjoying them in private with two bombshell beauties. The overly flirtatious sal sales pitch echoes in the hallway, a remarkable feat since it's, a it's, since it's full of people. Emmy strikes a very confident looking pose as though as an attempt to one-up her own ridiculousness, puffing her very modest chest and making the V for victory sign with her hand. Sounds delicious. So what do I owe the honor of being invited? You stood there looking really lost and sad, so I thought you could use some company. That is probably the most depressing reason imaginable. <clears throat> so, how about it? You're probably really lonely and would eat that awful cafeteria food all alone otherwise. Uh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Sure, I'll have your lunch offer. With pleasure. Let's go to the roof. The roof? Why the roof? Because that's where we eat lunch. And if I don't get up there, then she'll probably wander off and then I just know she'll go, go hungry because she never packs a lunch for herself. Who will? Come with me. Without answering my question or waiting for a response, she grabs me by the arm and drags me through the hallways. I attempt to make conversation on the way. Why do you have an extra lunch? Emmy smiles gu guiltily. Actually, it's yesterday's lunch. I slipped in an, in a run at lunch and forgot to eat it. Huh. It kind of high is this? Huh? Or huh? Or I don't know. The survey to the roof is a little dilapidated, dilapidated, but it's clearly been used recently. At the top of the stairs is a door, complete with missing padlock. I wonder who the intrepid individual was that... Remove the lock. Emmy shoves the door open and steps beaming into the sunlight. Oh. Suddenly a tall dark stranger appears out of nowhere, standing imposingly in front of us. Em Emmy flinches back, almost falling back down the stairs. Eek! Hello. Yipes, he scared me, Rin. Wait, isn't she? Hello. Noticing that Rin is speaking to me, Emmy looks curiously at me. You two know each other? I look confusedly at Emmy. He's that friend of yours? Rin has turned her gaze towards the clouds drifting above the school. I didn't know you knew this person, Emmy. The awkward silence lasts only for a few seconds until Emmy lets out a tiny giggle, shrugging the coincidence off. I invited his out for lunch. If you know him, that's just better. Oh, does this mean I don't get food? Or did you invite him for lunch without the lunch? Um, neither. I have food for three. Nice thinking. They walk to the other end of the roof while I stay at the clock tower for a while, taking in the atmosphere. There is nobody else but us here. I guess the roof is not as popular as it is in other schools. A few... A few rundown benches and tables are scattered around the edges, perhaps in an attempt to make the rooftop lo look less desolate. The small pebbles covering the roof rattle beneath our feet. I peek through the chain link fence to take a look at the school grounds and beyond. Students are strolling in pairs and groups around the qua quadrangle and at the cafeteria. I've never heard of that word before. A few delivery trucks are driving past the school towards the convenience store nearby. Somewhere a watchdog barks at a passerby. 
I don't know if that was meant to, but uh, meant to rhyme, but that was a pretty nice rhyme there. Somehow, when I look towards the town center, the small town feels a s the small town feel strikes me very strongly, almost palpable, palpably. God, so many words I don't, I rarely use, so hard to pronounce them right away. The hectic lifestyle of a big metro of big metropolises seems so far away and foreign here. Nobody has to run to catch a bus like their life depended on it, or get their senses overloaded by the neon lights and traffic jams. I feel surprisingly optimistic, optimistic about this new life of mine. Looking at my new hometown, even if it's going to be mine for my, for my, even if it's going to be mine for only one short year, bruh. Finding out about my illness and having to move away from my home all came so suddenly, I haven't had time to think about how I feel about it. When I step out of the shadow of the clock tower to the open, I feel warmth toward touching my back. The sun shines from a perfectly clear cerulean sky. I think I'm, I, I'm just... I'm trying to read too, way too fast for my own good. A cool breeze sweeping over the rooftop makes me shiver, but only briefly. The wind carries the scent of trees and flowers, not smog and car exhaust like it used to, just a few weeks ago. Me settles on a bench with Rin in tow and produces one big and two small lunchboxes from her bag. Come on, Hisao, what are you waiting for? He's beckoning me to join them, making room on the already small bench. Okay, the thing I did didn't really fix it, but... Or maybe that's what I was supposed to do? Okay, I don't know. I see myself in the corner of the bench to take as little space as possible. It's pretty cramped, but somehow all three of us fit on it. Impressive view. Emmy suppresses a giggle and places a lunchbox in front of Rin, and hands another lunchbox to me. Here you go, I just promised. Homemade, no less. I'm impressed. Wow, this looks really good. Thanks, I make it myself when I can. Conversation dies off as I set about the business of feeding myself. Taking a few bites, I glance up and notice Rin deftly opening the lunchbox and popping a fork full of food into her mouth using only her feet. Even though I've seen it before, I can't help but be impressed at her dexterity. It's also a reminder of the sort of place I am in, I am in right now. Will I ever get used to sights such as this? I can't decide if getting used to such a thing would be a good thing or a bad thing either. Does getting used to this place mean that I'm giving up on being a normal person? Or does it just mean that I'm becoming more understanding about those around me? I'm distracted from my thoughts by the sight of Emmy tearing into her lunch as if it had insulted her in ancestors. You seem pretty hungry. Emmy looks up, mouth half full and swallows before nodding. My morning run always works up an appetite. Okay. Yeah, okay. That that pause was not supposed to be there. But that time that tiny of a pause, I don't think I can really cut out since it's it's, it's really just a very brief one, but uh if you notice some pretty weird cuts then it's probably because it's uh, an actual like big pause for no reason. Which is great, because then I burn through lunch pretty quickly. How's me keep my girlish figure? What would happen if you lose it? Would you become a man? I very nearly choke at my lunch, trying not to laugh. It's a figure of speech. Bro. I'm gonna have to decide which ones I have to cut out or not. Because it, it's hard to tell, like... If I should cut that one out or not, right? I don't know. It's up to me, I guess, since I'm the one editing it. Does your figure have to run in the mornings too? <laughs> Do you always talk like this? Talk like what? Like what? I think that answers my question. Uh, never mind. So, uh... I struggle to think of small talk and settle on the obvious question. How do you two meet? Rin seems content to let Emmy answer this question. Someone in the housing department thought we'd complement each other well, so we were assigned rooms next to each other. I, I kind of did like a Rin voice and then transitioned to an Emmy voice because I was very... I don't know. 
Ugh. Compliment each other. Like shoes and a suit. Huh? Emmy giggles at my confusion. Put us together and we've got all our limbs, get it? Ah. So I started helping Rin get ready in the mornings, and that was that. I mean, you can't help someone get dressed every morning and not get along. I see. Rin chooses a moment to interject. I... I have trouble with shirts. Right, that seems fairly obvious. Really? Kind of. This isn't helping, but at least Emmy seems to find the whole thing funny. That, combined with the fact that Rin is genuinely curious, makes me feel slightly better and yet confused. I mean, you've got no arms. So uh, putting on a shirt seems like one of those things that would be difficult? You know what? I'm going to just stop talking now. It'll save me a lot of trouble in the long run. Rin nods in what I suspect is meant to be a sage, to be a sage manner. I see. The conversation dies as I turn my attention back to my lunch. It's really quite good. Emmy finishes her lunch first and makes a contented noise. Ah, that was good. As she busies, as she busies herself with the with cleaning up her lunch, Rin speaks up. I'm thirsty. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Sorry. With a flourish, she reaches into her bag and removes a trio of juice boxes. She tosses me one that appears to be cranberry juice, one to Rin that appears to be some kind of strawberry milk, complete with pink color scheme, and keeps an equally pink box of some kind of fruit punch for herself. Rin dexter dexterously stabs her straw through the top of her box and begins to drink. I'm once again impressed by how flexible she is, but this time I keep my comment to myself. Somehow I don't think either Emmy or Rin are the source of people to think twice about the way they work around their particular disabilities. Rin especially so. Indeed, she gives off the impression of being entirely unaware that she's missing any limbs at all. Whether or not that's a, con a conscious decision is another matter. I'm honestly not sure. So Hisao, how do you like it up here? Hmm? It's quite nice actually. I like high places, for the view. Thanks for inviting me up here. And for the lunch too. Me grins a thousand watt grin, pleased by my response, I suppose. No problem. Feel free to eat with us next time, too, okay? I won't make you a lunch, but you can bring your own up here. No lunch service? I don't know. Emmy looks mock offended. Trying to take advantage of my good nature? The nerve. <laughs> she giggles. Well, if that's your answer, oh. Well, if that's your answer, I guess Rin and I will just keep eating lunch all alone. Oh my gosh. I'm suddenly assaulted by the most hard-rending puppy, puppy dog eyes I've ever seen as Emmy pouts. Eating! I was kidding. I'd love to eat lunch up here again. Good location, and the company's okay too. Emmy frowns a bit at my declaration of okay, but seems happy enough that I've accepted your invitation. I guess this makes us friends now. Or at least acquaintances. Lunch bell rings, signaling a return downstairs. Rin, you didn't finish your lunch again. I wasn't that hungry. If you don't eat more, you're gonna fade away. Rin shrugs as if this is an acceptable risk. Come on, we'd better get going. The three of us head down the stairs together. Afternoon class passes. Once again, I find myself without a plan for something to do after school. So I head to the library to return a couple of books I finished reading. Walking inside, I see that there are about as many students here as there were on Tuesday. All the more evident from the almost total silence enveloping the room. Oh my god. As I drop the books I'd borrowed into the return slots in the counter, Yuko suddenly pops up from behind it, quite startled from the banging they make so as they hit the trolley next to her. Ah, sorry Yuko, didn't mean to startle you.
No, no, that's fine. It happens a lot. I'm used to it by now. Um, can I help you? It's okay. I think I know where everything is. Thanks anyway. I suppose I'll grab another book or two while I'm here. There's not much else to do. After reading so much during my stay in the hospital, it's become a hard habit to break. Maybe I'll switch it up, or maybe I'll reinstall the game? I'm not sure uh, how I should do this, but maybe I'll switch it up or something. I wander down to the fiction section towards the back of the library, scanning the bookshelves for anything that catches my eye. As I do, I look over to the corner where Hanoko had been the last time I was here, not really expect expecting anything to come of it. Surprisingly though, she's there, absorbed completely in a fairly thick book. I decide against intruding on her like last time and get back to finding reading material. After an indiscernible amount of time spent pursu pursuing the aisles, I finally decide on a couple of books to get and slide them off the shelf. With a minimum of fuss, I quickly walk over to the counter, check out my books, and pop them into my, into my bag as I walk out. By the time I leave the main building, Sunset isn't too far away. A small trickle of students remain, but the majority have left, presumably to their homes and dorms. I guess I need to buy some supplies. I can't live off cafeteria food, and eating out from, for my entire stay here? As I leave for the gate, I make a few loud stretches to try and save off the tiredness that accumulated over the week. Oh, this Lily! After passing through and rounding the corner though, I see a solitary figure walking downhill towards the small town below. The color of her hair and tapping of her cane are unmis unmistakable. I quickly walk up to her, which seems to catch her attention without a word needing to be said. Hi, Lily. She takes a moment to place the voice, slightly adjusting her head to face a bit more towards the source of my voice as she does. Is how? Yep, that's me. She seems to have a good memory for voices. The fact that she actually remembered is a pleasant surprise. Good evening. What brings you here? Once again, she gives a small polite bow. And once again, I reply in kind before realizing that I didn't need to do so. Just going to town. You? My my, what a coincidence. Doing the same thing, eh? Hmm, I usually go shopping on Fridays. He pauses for a moment, suddenly looking a little lost. That said, Hanako usually comes into town with me. Ah, not lost, but worried. The two do seem to keep pretty close tabs on one another. It's kind of surprising that Hanako would just forget Lily like that. I notice her reading the library. She probably just got caught up in the book. She lets out a small sigh of relief. Thank you. She has a habit of doing that. Avid reader? Right. She doesn't like being around crowds of people, so reading away from everyone lets her relax a bit. Although she probably didn't intend it, I can't help but grimace as I recall my first meeting with her. Hardly wanting to bring it up, I remain silent as we quietly continue to walk down the quiet road. Tack, 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 tack. With the road bereft of cars and the students of Yamaku increasingly far behind us, the quiet rustling of the leaves and the measured tapping of Lily's cane against the sidewalk are all that can be heard. It's kind of nice, especially compared to the hustle and bustle of where I used to live. Before I know it, I relax so much that a loud yawn escapes before I control it. Before I can control it. Tired. Yeah, been running ragged these past few days. That's an understatement, to be sure. Transferring into a different school would be bad enough, but nothing like this. Well, hopefully everything should settle down for you. The festival's got everyone in a spin right now, and you've been plopped right in the middle of things. For a moment, I hesitate, but given her apparent tolerance for frankness, I decide to give my full thoughts. I guess, Yamaku's kind of different though. I mean, the formality surrounding everything, the isolation around it, not to mention the most obvious difference. It's kind of a whole different mindset. I suppose I'll get used to it, though, in time. She gives a matter-of-fact nod, I'm apparently pleased with my answer. It feels almost as if she's included me in the flock of students she is sh shepherding, along with class 3-2 and Hanako. Well, not that I mind. It's nice to get the thoughts off my chest in any case. 
Looking on the bright side, one could see it as a chance for a new beginning. We should cherish the ability to make new friends. That's optimistic. Nonetheless, it's good to have a positive attitude about such things, I suppose. I guess that's a good take on it. Oh. She looks sad now. Walking on, walking on down the road, she seems to become somewhat unsettled. Before I can ask what's on her mind, she seems to collect herself and speaks up, up about something else. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, where in town were you going? It's actually a pretty good question. I'd come in to buy food, but the layout of the place is still totally foreign to me. I had intended to just wander around and see what I could find, but with sunset already approaching and nightfall not too far away, that doesn't seem very wise. I'm going to have to ask her for directions, again. I was just going to go get some food, but now that you mention it, I don't really know the way. Well now, this is quite lucky. I was just going to go to the convenience store myself. Looks like I'll be in your care again, then. Thanks. Together we walked to the store. My pace is carefully slowed to remain beside her. Compared to my usual walking pace, hers is quite a bit slower. Not that it's without reason. After what couldn't be more than several minutes, I catch sight of our objective. This town really is pretty small. Without further ado, we make our way inside with a greeting from the counter. Mind if I tag along with you? Usually Hanako would help me, but seeing as she's not here. It takes a moment before I realize what she means. Considering she wouldn't be able to read any of the labels, shopping without any help would be a big pain for her. That said, I can't shake the feeling that she'd had this idea since I said I was coming here. Sure, it'd be my pleasure. Got two well-used red baskets from the small stack beside the entrance, handing one to Lily. He lays it on the ground, putting her school bag in, retracting her cane, and sliding it through the basket's handles before picking it up. Picking it back up in her right hand. Wait, if she doesn't use her cane... Oh. Before I can complete the thought, she comes beside me and pinches the cuff of my uniform in her slender fingers. Aw. Is this alright? Uh, sure. I have no reason not to accept. I can think of worse things than shopping with a pretty girl holding onto me. Even if it is out of necessity. We navigate our way through the store with now one of the occasional passing customers seeming to bat an eyelid. Considering how close Yamaku is, I guess seeing students from there must be entirely normal for the local residents. As we reach each aisle, I quickly check with Lily and find out what she needs. I grab it along with what I'm looking for and put our items into respective baskets. I guess this is the same routine she and Hanuko follow every Friday. Right, all that's left is the bread and that should be my shopping done. Do you need anything else, Lily? No, this should be everything. Off we go, then. With a kick with a quick side trip to the bakery section, we make our way to the registers. The line, thankfully, is almost non existent. It's not long before we're we've both paid for our food and are out of the door. Ooh. As Ali retrieves her cane and extends it to full length, I waste a minute looking upwards at the night sky while holding both our bags. For a moment, I try to make clouds with my breath, but the summer's heat doesn't seem to cooperate. Eventually, she writes herself, taking a quick stretch before taking her bag and leaving me to, to my two. You tired as well? Festival preparations have been complete chaos. Shizune breathing down my neck doesn't exactly help things either. Hey, she's only trying to get everything organized. Better now than later, right? I suppose... I'm going to enjoy relaxing in town tomorrow, that's for certain. I guess the festival preparations must be taking their toll on both of them. <clears throat> we walk out into the quiet street, talking between ourselves as we carry our bags of food and supplies from the store. Wait, what's that? I notice a very distinctive figure making its way towards us, silhouetted by the street lamps. For a second, I think it's another male student from my class, but as he, or should I say she, she, gets closer, I recognize her quickly. Oh, 
Rin, what are you doing out here so late? Rin? Lily perks her head, looking like she's trying to focus on listening more keenly. It suddenly comes to me that I should probably interpret the scene for her. It's, it's Rin, Tezuka, I think what's her last name from our school. She stiffens at the name and gives a complicated looking expression, something like a forced fusion of a composed smile and a painful cringe. Ah, I understand. I guess Lily knows Rin too. Rin turns to look at us, looking terribly out of it. I'm not entirely sure if she recognizes either of us, or at least she doesn't acknowledge it if she does. She looks like a zombie, or a statue. A statue of a zombie? But slowly, some symptoms of understanding seem to light in her dark eyes. This is something she must react to. Rin blinks once, very thoroughly. Hello. There's an awkward pause, everyone waiting for someone else to say something. What are you doing here this late? I... I was wondering about that myself too, just now. Some people asked that just before. I assumed they were wondering the same. I didn't know. They didn't know either, I asked. That's why I'm wondering. That was pretty much it. It's a murder mystery without a murder. They were going that way. She turns facing to her right in order to demonstrate the direction the other people went to as if it that was if as if that was important. Then rotates back like a mechanical puppet in one of those overly complicated clockworks. For a person who gives an impression of being the quiet type, Rin really does use a lot of words to say things that will need a lot to be said. Unsure if she's finished, I say nothing. Neither does Lily, who seems equally robbed of words for the time being. I think that both of us are in fact just scared that any response might provoke her to continue. Her stupefied lack of reaction doesn't phase Rin at all. She keeps looking at us, expectantly, a calm hint of expression on her blank face. She seems to be that kind of person, always so relaxed. As if bull, as if bull elephant grave sedatives were flowing in her veins in, pa in place of blood. Do you have amnesia? I don't recall you having anything of the sort though. No, I don't think it's that. The other passerby were probably just worried though. You do look really lost, the way you're standing in the middle of the street. <clears throat> oh, I see. Maybe I should have taken some other kind of pose in that case. I ponder for a while whether I should chase this angle further, or give up for the sake of my own sanity. I decide on the latter. It seems that most of the time, it's better to not read too deeply into what Rin is babbling about. Talking with Rin is like playing chess with a supercomputer who does seemingly completely random moves, as if to mock everything you know about chess. It's like that, except with human interaction. And even if I win, it feels like losing. Damn, it's just like Kenji said, even when I win, I lose. Is this the power of the girls of Yamaku? I push the thought aside as too dangerous to consider further. It's probably just Kenji's anti-female propaganda getting to me during a moment of weakness. Yeah, maybe taking another pose might have worked. Well anyway, you have no idea what you're doing here? She frowns, looking extremely displeased at either my question, its consequences, or the answer she's about to give. I do have some idea, but I can't really tell what kind of an idea. That sounds like progress, at least. But I think I just... They both have very similar voices, if not the literal, literally the same. It's hard to differentiate. They, they're both like kind of calm voices, but I can't really... It's hard for me to differentiate them. Lily sounds as if she spotted an opening for some kind of discernibly normal conversation. I can't say I share her optimism. Yes, there is some. Definitely. The rest will come later. I really do need to fix this somehow. I might have to uninstall and replay up until a certain point. I'm not sure. Or we'll just have to roll with it. We'll, we'll really just have to roll with it for the rest of the game. Hopefully not though. I'm sure of it. I always have reasons. The ensuing silence kills Lily's hopes all too visibly. That didn't last long. Rin's, as far as I can tell, unbased. Assurances, I sighed. 
What should what should be done? We could just leave her to our own devices. Whatever those are. But it's late, and I don't think we'll be getting any thanks if Rin is found standing here in the middle of the night. Which she probably will, unless she manages to remember what she was doing here in the first place. As for me trying to guess what might have been going on in her mind when she decided to embark on this adventure, the chances seem to be on par with winning the lottery. Several times in a row. That leaves only quiet too. I'd appreciate some support from the sidelines here, especially if she's more familiar with Rin than I am. But it can't be helped. It seems her familiarity with Rin is exactly why she's staying subdued. So, I assume you were going somewhere, not coming to school. Any idea where? Her eyes widen in shock and she jolts back in a somewhat artificial way, making it seem like an act rehearsed for situations like this. Maybe... Maybe instead of waiting, I should just click and so it does the double click and then I just go back one. E even if that might spoil some things ahead of the ahead of time but I, th I feel like that is better to do instead of waiting and also it will be a lot of work for me to edit all all these pauses it's strange because in the first for seven episodes of the series that of Karo Shoujo it never happened and then it suddenly started happening in episode eight and then nine and then now this time I don't know uh, We'll just have to next episode I'll, I'll try doing the way that i just said but let's just keep going with this or maybe i can just start with doing it now her eyes widen in shock and she jolts back in a somewhat artificial way making it seem like an act rehearsed for situations like this uh, are you a mind reader is that your disability how unique no what why would you think that you knew what i you knew what I, uh you knew what I was doing. Oh my god, her face. What is this face? Uh, it was just an educated guess. We walked the same street in the other direction just before, to get to the store. If you were going to school, we would have met you on the way. Oh. She looks a little disappointed. Okay. Like Kenji, Rin appears quick to jump to completely irrational conclusions. Maybe it's something in the water here. I make a mental note to stock up on soft drinks. <clears throat> You know, that is the second time this week that someone asked if I was a mind reader. Why really give off that impression? Rin shrugs her shoulders, which is all the answer I get. You know... I... Maybe you should come with us back to the school. Lily interjects just as I am about to further debunk my alleged mind reading capabilities. She sounds rather concerned, a paper thin smile on her face barely disguising that fact. Maybe she came to the same conclusion as I did. For everyone's sake, I decide to let the mind reading topic drop, as it's entirely insane anyway. Or inane, anyway. Yeah, Lily's right. If you can't remember, there's no point staying here. Rin considers the rather simple deduction for a moment, then nods. Okay. We start towards the school again, having wasted way more time than necessary with this episode. Also me, I wish. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Rin walks along the edge of the, of the sidewalk in a, a rhythmic way, looking like a mix of sleepwalker and a rope dancer, while Lily keeps one hand on my shoulder, tapping at the ground with her cane. Tap, step, step, tap, tap, step, step, step. Apart from that and a few fragmented beginnings of conversation, it's quiet. A quiet... A quiet quite apart from the relaxing one into town at that. So how's the mural going? We're going to get bad luck. Oh, we're going to get bad luck. Never talk about works in progress. I'm sure it'd be wonderful. Oh god, it's gonna be weird if they both talk at the same time. It's just gonna be so weird. Bad luck. Tap, step, tap, step. She doesn't care to talk about it. Lily's politeness feels out of place for the first time. Step, step, step. The hill Yamaku rests on top of is surprisingly steep, going uphill. We slow the pace, but I feel my pulse rising and breathing getting heavier. Almost there, I can see the gates already. More than that though, I notice that Lily's hand slightly tightens on my shoulder, interpreting it is as a gesture that she wants to ask something, I speak up. Anything wrong, Lily? 
I resist, I resist the urge to say aside from our traveling companion, but only just. For a moment, she seems to debate whether she should even bring it up, but goes for it anyway. Is everything alright? Alright? How do you mean? The fact that the fact I can't interpret interpret her incredibly vague question puts her off for a second. It's just you seem unusually tired, I guess. Now that she brings it up, I notice that my breathing is strangely heavy. The uphill, the uphill walk has really done a job on me. Lily noticed it all too quickly. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like it's better to just say it straight up. Because I feel like she, she would be very understanding. And I feel like Isao should open up more to people about his condition. It's alright. I just need to catch up, catch my breath. My condition isn't the best these days. Oh. Is it something like... Is this something that is related to you being transferred here? I mean... Aw, oh, she's so sad looking now. Oh. She cuts herself off rather abruptly. Maybe realizing she was being a bit intrusive. Her instincts are sharp though. And while I don't like the subject, it's not like I should lie about it. If it's silly... I don't think I'm mine. There you go, Hisao. That is how you should be doing things. I'm just a little weak for the time being. Anako said you look fairly healthy, so I naturally thought... Lily doesn't finish her sentence again, letting it trail off with a measure of concern. Wait. Okay. As she furrows her brow, her brow, Lily's uncomfortable expression spurs me to say at least something to ease her feelings. It's surprising she is this flustered, considering her straightforward attitude with her own blindness. She must know that not all, that not all share her her own comfort about such things. No, it's okay. I have a pretty, I guess the best way to put it, would be messed up heart, arrhythmia. I had a bad heart attack a while ago because of it, and spent most of the spring in the hospital. Ended, ended in Yamaku on doctor's orders. She silently nods her head in acknowledgement. My answer, though, only seems to make Lily furrow her brow even further. She doesn't seem to quite know how to react, given we don't really know each other that well. I can't really fault her for it, given I have the exact same reaction. To my surprise, in a moment's time, her face shows that she's come to some sort of realization. Wait, so the time when Emmy and you collided in the hallway. Oh yeah, that 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 point. What was that episode? Episode 6, I think. I grimaced slightly. Her ability to connect the dots quite so fast is unexpected. Yeah, I guess I'm a textbook example of why those rules about running in the corridors exist. That was a lot more dry than I intended. Lily visibly shines away from continuing the topic. Well, I do want to assuage as 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 her concern. I really don't want to dwell on this either. Don't worry about it. Oh, I try to offer a reassuring smile, but then I realize the futility. Without knowing this, Lily smiles at me reassuringly, but doesn't say anything further. Arriving at the dorms, Rin stops in front of her mural as if lightning struck her. She had been so quiet for almost all of the walk back that I had all but forgotten she was here. It's Friday, isn't it? Oh my god, that face again. Yes, Friday, the 8th of June. This is bad. Bad? Why? I think I'm going to go in the fetal position and throw up. Possibly in reverse order. Is something wrong? No, nothing is wrong. It's Friday and nothing is wrong yet. This mural, it's going to need to be finished by Sunday, so everything's alright. What? <laughs> I don't get it. Do you have any drugs? Or a time machine? This is not good. Not good. So she's behind her schedule, recalling Suzune's exasperation at Rin's carefree attitude several days ago. <clears throat> I don't know what to think. She has left herself open for a told you so, unless she pull off for whatever she needs to pull off by Sunday morning. Rin keeps staring at her mural, looking as mortified as she can. Leave me. I'm going to need to work for a while. I glance at Lily, expecting her to share an incredulous look with me as I roll my eyes, but then I realize she's not one to do that kind of thing. 
leave me. Oh my goodness. Look kind of scary there. We do, of course, not wanting to aggravate her any more than she already is. There's a churning bad feeling in my gut. Rin sure has a knack of making people feel worried about her. She seems like a person who would never be left alone. Maybe we should call someone. She sounded like she was going to, into shock or something. I'm sure she will be f just fine. She's just, uh, uh, how to say... Lily cocks her head a little, trying to find a polite way of calling Rin crazy without calling her crazy. Unique? Yes, a very unique person. I guess you could say that. She giggles at the notion melodi melodi me melodiously, nodding in agreement. Sorry about leaving you stranded as you talk to her. I don't really understand her, so I keep my distance. Uh, so my guess was right. Lily offers a slight uh, apologetic smile as if she was sorry that her own shortcomings had prevented her from becoming closer to Rin. I'm not one to blame her at all. Lily lets a slip. Uh, Lily lets a... Uh, bruh. Lily lets slip a long breath. Uh, I don't... I don't know, that, that's weird. Probably a disguised yawn. I imagine she's exhausted by all this as I am. I'd better leave now and give these to Hanako. Thank you for the company, Hisao. She smiles very sweetly at me. It feels different than normal, despite the fact that she seems to be smiling so often. I can't put my finger on what the difference is. It's just different. Relaxed, I'd say. But that's probably just relief over getting rid of Rin, maybe. Yeah, good night. Say hi to Hanako for me. I will. Good night. Edit. Hey. Alright guys, I think that will be enough for me. Oh, we're in the classroom. But anyways, I think that will be enough for me for this episode. Uh, for this episode i'll see you guys in the next episode make sure you guys like and subscribe and see ya